All right, Jimmy, you get it. Thanks. Thanks. Hey, Matty. Matty, how you doing? Matty, how you doing? Matty, don't you want to say anything? Hey, Matty, can we talk? Oh, I don't know. Matty, can we talk? Guy me, eh? Oh! Matty, are you worried about this trial? Sorry, sorry. 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 I saw this guy with the gray jacket on his face too. Knock it off, huh? Just, just knock it off. Just, just, just knock it off. Get you lost. Knock, you knock it off, huh? What do you have against me? What do you got against me? That's what I want to know. No, 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 no. What do you got? What do you got against me? That's what I want to know. Why don't you go take the bullshit in there with them? What are you spotting around here? Get out of here! Get the fuck out of here! 
give us three, five seconds to run through. No, I ain't even got two seconds. Yeah, this car. Yeah. 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 Just your reaction to what's happened. Just, let it through. Just give us a, a, a quick reaction to what's happened. Is any of this stuff let us get through? Let us get through. What are you doing? No comment at all. Come on. Stop it. This is wrong. Now, come on. Should be a limit. You know, take it easy, Bobby. Okay. Tony, Tony, over here. Right here. When you first just spell your name, hold on. Get started. Hold on. Till we're all set. Why don't we all do it? Civilized, civilized man. Okay. You got a cable here. Hang on. Is there anybody who's not rolling? You're not a small man. I remember from the L.A. Capital R O S S A. What was that? L.A. Capital R O S S A. La Rosa or La Rosa? R O S S A. How do you say it? La Rosa. La Rosa. Okay. That's La Rosa. What do you think about the indictment against your you want to get to mission and all that? Well, I read the indictment, but I, it reads like a screen script more than an indictment. It appears to be more involved in 1905 with what happened among old famous names like Lucky Luciano and Carlo Gambino and all the names that we've read about in the past. Uh, frankly, I, I want to see some of the evidence. <laughs> I've always disputed the concept that there is a commission, and it's going to have to be proven to me, and I hope proven to the American public. There's been so much publicity about this lately. Do you dispute the, the tapes supposedly that a, say a mafia? I dispute the entire concept. It's never been proven to me, and it's never been proven to a, to a jury, as far as I'm concerned. Yes. The prosecution no. says that on the tapes, the people talk about the mafia. I haven't heard the tapes, I haven't seen the tapes, I dispute that at this time, and I think when we see it, we might find that there's a little exaggeration. There is a little exaggeration in their contention that there is a syndicate of organized crime that is related to something called La Casa Nostra? I believe there's crime, and I believe that people bind together in it. Therefore, you can call that an organized crime. I don't believe there's a commission, I don't believe there's a La Casa Nostra, and it has to be proven to me, and it has to be proven to an American jury at one point. But it has been proven to an American jury in, in other instances, has it not, that there is uh, evidence that various uh, individuals have been found guilty of being part of something called La Casa Nostra? It's been proven that people have bound together in a conspiracy. You can call it whatever you choose. All right? But I dispute the concept that there is an organized, real commission. Other than that, gentlemen, I have nothing to do. Thank you. Cut away. 
All right, Barry, what is the situation where lawyers might not be receiving a fee from these defendants? Well, what happens is the Congress has passed a statute uh, which indicates that there's a forfeiture in a RICO case of attorney's fees. Now, unfortunately, uh, attorneys are unwilling to take cases that are based upon contingencies, and that's harming innocent people. People are presumed to be innocent at the accused stage, and there are defendants right now who are unable to get attorneys of their own choosing uh, because of the fact that the attorneys are concerned about the forfeiture statute. Well, the way the forfeiture statute reads, the way the forfeiture statute reads right now, all their funds, even their funds they'd have to use to pay you, would be taken away. Absolutely. I mean, there's a there's a trace that Congress has put upon funds, and if the monies that attorneys receive are as a result of a jury verdict with regard to forfeiture and racketeering activity, all of those funds are forfeitable. So what's happening now is that you have people who are presumed to be innocent not being able to have attorneys of their own choice. This racketeering statute and the forfeiture provision is horrendous. So you lawyers might bow out. Well, I think what's happened is that the Sixth Amendment right to counsel has been served not well and has been dealt with in terms of a situation whereby lawyers are bowing out. I have refused, ca refused cases through my office in the last few weeks because of the fact that I've been concerned about whether I'd have to return my fees to the government two years from now. I'm not going to do that, unfortunately. Well, are you going to stay in this case, can you say? In this case, I will be staying in this case. And I'm sure that my fees will not be forfeitable. Well, then this whole thing is academic. No, it's not. This may be a case that's different than the other cases. Okay, let's get reverses. Talk, talk, talk. Talk, right. talk, okay. Yeah. Are we on sound, uh, or can we talk about everything else? Talk about, okay, well, good. You look uh, good. Tell me who you're re representing. Right now, Della Croce and Scopo. We oh, have two them. defendants, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they both have families. They, they know they have individuals. They have friends who are willing to chip in for their defense. Mm -hmm. So that's what it is. But uh, hey, I... Way back at the beginning, when this plan was first being formulated, Ron Goldstock, the Deputy Attorney General in charge of the Organized Crimes T Task Force in New York State, came to us and proposed a cooperative arrangement with his office to see if we could use the federal RICO statutes to further what his investigators and what the New York State Police had discovered. Indeed, at, at that time and now, that was a very, very unique uh, contribution. Their work, their original work on this case, their development of evidence involving the commission as well as evidence involving organized crime in general uh, was uh, very, very valuable, indeed crucial to the development of, uh, of this case. Uh, Ron Goldstock could have taken a, a different view of it. He could have taken a narrow, more parochial view of it, but he put the public good first and came forward and proposed a joint arrangement. It has worked out uh, very successfully from the point of view of his office and my office and uh, we certainly hope that we are going to continue it. So I'd ask that, uh, that Ron describe the indictment and his contribution to it. Let me start off with a little prologue. 17 and 15 years ago, a man by the name of G. Robert Blakey drafted two statutes which later became known as the Org Omnibus Crime Control Safe Streets Act and the Organized Crime Control Act. And it provided, among other things, for electronic surveillance, for testimonial immunity, for the witness protection program, and for a sophisticated new legal weapon known as the Racketeer Influence Corrupt Organizations Act, or RICO. From that time on, it meant that we did not have to fight a war of attrition against organized crime, which we were losing. It meant that we could attack syndicates and look at enterprise corruption. Since that time, in the late 70s and 80s, major federal uh, indictments against organized crime were all brought under the RICO statute. It proved such a valuable tool that 22 states passed a RICO statute. New York, with all its organized crime problems, has not seen fit to do so. Let me go on to the Organized Crime Task Force, which is established for the purpose of conducting investigations into multi-county organized crime. As part of our mandate in 1982, we began an investigation into the Long Island carding industry. We found that through our investigation, that industry was dominated by organized crime, in particular the Lucchese family and the Gambino families. And the method of control was through the Industry Association, PSI. 
The power behind PSI was Sal Avellino Jr., a soldier in the Lucchese crime family. Avellino also had another job. He drove Antonio Tony Dux Corallo, the boss of the family. And pursuant to a court order, technicians from the Organized Crime Task Force planted a bug behind the dashboard of the Black Jaguar used by Avellino to chauffeur Corallo. And for the next five months, during the spring and the summer of 1983, state police, organized crime task force investigators, investigators from the New York City Police Department and from the Suffolk County Police Department, followed that car, recording over 75 hours of conversations between the upper echelons of the Lucchese crime family. Those tapes, which were superb in terms of clarity, and extraordinary in terms of content, led to the indictment of the upper echelon of the Lucchese family and 20 other people for domination of the Long Island carding industry through coercion, through bribery of labor officials, and through official corruption. Also in that indictment, alleged for the first time in any public document, the grand jury stated that there was a commission made up of the heads of the five families which was established for and served the purpose of resolving disputes among the competing interests of those families. Without a RICO statute, we couldn't go no further. And we had been working very closely with the FBI, with Rudy Giuliani in the Southern District and the Eastern District. We had cross-designated assistance, and we went to Giuliani and gave him the information, worked with him, and the indictments that you have before you are the results of that. Let me, I had a prologue, let me give you a postlogue. A um, couple of words about our hosts. The FBI, Judge Webster. FBI has been absolutely incredible in recent years in terms of its investigation of organized criminal activity. They are aggressive, they are proactive, they have been working with local law enforcement agencies, the joint task force is set up between them and the New York City Police Department and their cooperation with our offices is a tribute to that. And they have um, nothing uh, that, I can, that I can't say about them. They are fantastic. Now, the second host, Rudy Giuliani. I teach in law school. Law school teaches students how to spot issues. And the result is when you go to a lawyer with a problem, the lawyer can come up with 15 issues and 10 reasons why you can't do something. That's not the case with Rudy Giuliani. He has one question, how can we do it? How can we best do it and how can we move quickly? And his can-do attitude and that attitude of his staff and the cross designations, and the attitude of the FBI and all the other law enforcement agencies that I mentioned working with it, and the foresight of Bob Blakey who wrote the statutes a decade and a half ago have led to what is essentially these historic indictments. I would also like to introduce uh, the Attorney General of the State of New York. The Attorney General of this state, uh, I can remember when I was in Washington as Associate Attorney General, called me, I think it was two or two and a half years ago, concerned about the fact that New York State does not have a RICO statute. And at that time, he was holding hearings and uh, putting on a great deal of pressure in order to get a RICO statute passed in the state. He is one of the leaders in that regard, probably the leader in, in New York State, for getting a RICO statute in New York so that New York can join really at, at the prosecutorial level in full partnership in making these cases. And it's a great privilege to introduce him. His, he is in charge of, uh, ultimately in charge of the organized crime task force and has done more with that than any attorney general in memory. So it's a pleasure to introduce Attorney General Abrams. Thanks very much, uh, Rudy. When I came to the office of Attorney General of the state of New York, I came with a conviction and a strong feeling that the state could play a meaningful role in the struggle against organized crime. Historically, that wasn't the case. The organized crime task force in the state was moribund. I took that view to the governor and the legislature, and I said, let's apply some resources. The feds are there with a powerful statute with a lot of investigatory tools, but we can play a role with district attorneys and the federal authorities. And over these four years, we've been able to increase that budgetary commitment, have resources from the state police applied, and the kind of 
evidence, electronic surveillance that has assisted in the preparation of the indictments that are unsealed here today is a vindication of the kind of role that the state can play in the struggle against organized crime. I'm very proud of the State Organized Crime Task Force, the men and women there who worked very hard, well into the night, under the direction of Ron Goldstock, the Deputy Attorney General, and I feel very proud and want to publicly indicate my great pleasure at the total professionalism and hard work and commitment that they gave. I think the action here today, as Rudy has indicated, points out the potent weapon that the RICO statute is. And I think it's a stain on the record of New York that we have yet to enact a statute that we can use more effectively in coordination with district attorneys and the federal authorities in attacking the scourge of organized crime. It's still shocking to me that 22 states in this union, most of them the smallest of the states in the union, with the least amount of organized crime, has gotten its legislature to pass a RICO-type statute. And yet we have failed. I am grateful to Rudy Giuliani, who responded when he was the Associate Attorney General of the United States, who helped us launch hearings across New York to put together a record to try to go the legislature into passing such a statute. We're going to have to use his talent and resources again in trying to prod the legislature to give us this incredibly important weapon so that we can have in the arsenal of state law enforcement as, as well a RICO statute that can add to the kinds of announcements that are being made here today. Let me uh, finally indicate that obviously the pressure is on, on organized crime. They are on the run. The series of announcements that led up to today's historic set of indictments, I think, are going to be met with future announcements. It shows the kind of commitment that there is in law enforcement and in government to overcome and overpower organized crime that for too long has dominated the illegal activities and increasingly getting into legitimate businesses of the economy of the city and state of New York. I thank Rudy Giuliani, all of those who cooperated so brilliantly in making this day possible. Let me uh, acknowledge he came in after we, uh, we all sat down, but they played a very significant role in this case. The uh, New York State Police, Inspector David Luckweiler is here, and the New York State Police serves as the investigative arm for the Organized Crime Task Force, and they played a very, very crucial role in this case. I'm very uh, happy for my office to hear all of these nice words about me, but I don't do this by any means alone, and nor am I the most significant player in it. I have an organized crime unit in my office headed by Barbara Jones, it was headed previously by Walter Mack, that is just the most incredible group of lawyers that you're going to find anywhere. Uh, an incredible group of dedicated, intelligent, brilliant people who work 14, 15, 16 hours a day, seven days a week, and you can come there on a Saturday and Sunday and you'll find them there. I wish I could mention all of them. Uh, I'm sure over the course of the next year or two, as we bring indictments based on this uh, tremendous <coughs> investigation, uh, all of them will get mentioned because they're associated with one case or another of these. The person who worked closest with me in developing this case and, and presented it to the grand jury is Michael Chertoff, and I would ask him to, uh, to uh, give us a brief description of the indictment. Michael. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, as the indictment indicates to you, the primary charges that have been handed down by the grand jury are racketeering charges under the RICO statute. The enterprise charged in this indictment is the commission which is made up of bosses and senior officers of five La Cosa Nostra families in New York, as well as, from time to time, bosses of certain La Cosa Nostra families that are outside of New York. Specific racketeering acts are charged in addition against these individual defendants. Ten of these racketeering acts involve a massive extortion scheme in the concrete industry in New York City. All of the defendants in this indictment, with the exception of Philip Rustelli, are named as having been personally involved in carrying out a scheme to extort over a million dollars 
from concrete pouring contractors who operate in New York. Under this scheme, as the indictment charges it, contracts of a value exceeding $2 million fell within the jurisdiction of the Commission, and the Commission and its agents allocated the jobs and designated who would win contracts. They enforced this rule by means of their control over the supply of concrete and their ability to threaten contractors with labor problems if they did not comply. And the indictment specifically charges over one and a quarter million dollars in payoffs that were received as a result of this extortion scheme. Some payoffs directly to the president of the District Council of Concrete Workers, Ralph Scopo. In addition to the extortion charges, the indictment charges six racketeering acts involving murder. District Attorney Holtzman has already discussed the murders concerning Carmen Galente and Leonard Coppola. In addition, the indictment charges that the Commission authorized the murders of three captains in the Bonanno family, Alphonse Indelicato, Dominic Trinchera, and Philip Giacome. Some of you may remember that in 1982, there was a trial in this district in which two individuals were convicted for participating in, a, in an enterprise of the Bonanno family which actually carried out these murders in 1981. This indictment charges that among those who participated and authorized the murder of the three captains were Bonanno family boss Philip Rustelli, Gambino family boss Paul Castellano, and Lucchese family boss Anthony Tony Ducks Corallo. Let me finally say uh, on a personal note that it has been a privilege for me to work not only with the other assistants in the United States Attorney's Office and the U.S. Attorney himself, but with the agents of the Federal Bureau of Investigation and the highly skilled police detectives which have been assigned to this investigation. Frankly, their ingenuity, dedication, and personal courage is an inspiration, and they carry on their work in the highest tradition of public service. I thought in conclusion I would, I would note the fact or explain to you very briefly how this investigation uh, developed. Uh, as has been described uh, back about, well, first of all, the FBI here in New York and the FBI nationally decided some years ago on a family concept to try to target each one of the organized crime families and make RICO cases against them. In the course of uh, conducting those investigations, they developed substantial evidence about each one of these families, including, uh, based on court-authorized electronic surveillances, uh, tape-recorded conversations involving the mention of the word commission and discussions about the commission, what it does, and the membership of, of the commission. Ronald Goldstock has described the work of, uh, of the New York State Organized Crime uh, Task Force and of the New York State Police in also collecting evidence uh, based on the, on the uh, Avellino, what, what would be called the Avellino tapes of descriptions of the commission, its workings, and uh, the people that were involved in it, particularly from the point of view of the Lucchese family. At that point, on September 2nd, 1983, we had a meeting in the Department of Justice with the Attorney General, then Attorney General Smith, Mr. Trott, Director Webster, and Associate Attorney General Lowell Jensen, and others from the FBI, and developed a plan to put together this case as an adjunct uh, and as a way of helping to pull together our, our family cases. From that point on, the FBI and the New York City Police Department uh, conducted a massive investigation that included collecting thousands and thousands of additional hours of tape-recorded uh, conversations involving, uh, and at this point uh, they are sealed, so I can't comment on them, but I can reveal the fact that there are thousands and thousands of hours of tapes.